So some bozo decided to delete the intro that we did previously. Yeah, that's right. Who was that, Tim? That was uh, the guy <laughs> holding the camera. Because <laughs> I can't do it, I'm driving. <laughs> oh yeah, right. So we're on our way to uh, robots and dinosaurs. Yep, R and D. Oh, I've only seen photos on Facebook and yep. the website, and um, I hear they've got lots of machinery, stuff that you would find really useful, but you know you wouldn't use too often. So hard to justify buying. Also, the space in the garage, like you know, um, yeah. you couldn't. A laser cutter is a pretty big one, I understand. For those people who say a garage is for a car, that's still mistaken. Where am I now? I'm just going to turn. Oh, no, I'll turn right. Turn. Yeah. Let's uh, see what it looks like, eh? Alright, great. Looking forward to it, mate. <laughs> ah, okay. I might be upstairs. On your phone, I thought it was just there that way. And if you look at Google Maps, you can actually see it's pointing roughly here. Okay. This is looking promising, I think. Maybe this little lane way, eh? Ten? Actually, it should be 10, yeah. It's been 14. There we go. 10. 10. I don't think it's the Australian Traditional Medal Medicine Society. Maybe they've moved. What about this 8B? I don't know. Have to give him a call. Hey mate, I'm completely lost. I'm standing in the parking lot where there's a Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, sorry mate. How's it going? How are you going? Welcome, come on. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, this is Robots and Dinosaurs. We're a makerspace where pe place where people come together and just make things. Um, we've got a whole bunch of bits and pieces to help with that. We've got a pair of laser cutters over here. Alright. Um, I was actually nice. just playing around making a Sudoku board this morning. Uh, so. So is this the cutouts from the board? Yep, you yep, yep. Oh, just, just little test pieces at the moment. No, yep. I'm just playing with the scaling until I get the whole thing. And what material are you cutting? This is uh, bamboo plywood. Oh. Um, yeah, we've got MDF as well, and other plywoods, and it's really easy to cut wood, it's really easy to cut plastic. And like, uh, obviously not too thick, right? Yeah, that's it. The, the, the plastic you can get a bit thicker, you really sort of spill stuff, that's, that's quite strong. And that's what yeah. just perspex is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. Gav, now Gav, Tim and I had a discussion yeah. on the way over. What would happen if we cut, tried to cut a mirror? See the glass tube at the back there? Yeah. yeah. That is a CO2 laser tube, mm -hmm. and it makes an infrared beam. So, um, have a look at this. So, electromagnetic spectrum. You've got blue light here. You've got red light here. Every piece of visible art you have ever seen and enjoyed in your entire life has been within this little range here. The CO2 laser is over here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a it's so far away from visible light that what we think of as mirrors and what we think of as transparent doesn't quite apply. Which is why you can have uh, a see-through window on the top rather than a, a totally opaque okay. box. The way that you cut acrylic is that yeah. it melts yeah. and then it runs away through the gap where it vaporizes yeah. or so you're locally heating and melting yeah. but the if you try and cut metal it's too good a heat sink so instead of getting one really hot spot that vaporizes Cold and cuts the whole away. thing just gets slightly warm. Yeah. These mirrors are magic metal of some sort. Um, magic have, metal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the previous previous laser cutter we had uh, copper mirrors, just polished copper. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And that Makes reflects sense. really well. Because it's reflecting off the surface, it's yeah. really efficient or, as opposed to a like a glass metal mirror where it's got to go through a layer and then out again, mm. so you're not heating the glass. In, inside the box is, is activated charcoal. Um, oh, yeah. Plus uh, two layers of, of filtration on top of that, oh, um, wow. and the idea is to just capture anything that comes out of the uh, yeah. out, out of the laser cutter, um, and, and so we can be nice neighbours. Yeah. You know. yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. well, well I saw go to that right outside. Oh, yeah. No, but then you filter no, 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 it. No, it's, it's, it's filtered. Yeah. That's. This is a commercial filter for specifically for laser cutters, and this, this behaves worse than the one we made ourselves. <laughs> oh. So this is why this thing is disconnected in the corner. That's pushing in, and that's pulling out. Okay. And there's another, there's a third fan inside there as well. I take it that this, this psychic fan has to be more powerful than the blower, otherwise you end up with positive pressure inside No, the no, no, it's easier to push than it is to pull, um, because you can push as many atmospheres as you like, but yeah. you can't pull more than one atmosphere. If you're pushing water in a pipe up a hill, for example, yeah. you can push it as high up as you like. Yeah. But you can't suck water through a straw more than 10 metres, yeah. because 10 metres of water is one atmosphere worth of pressure. Yeah. So you'd end up with a perfect vacuum at the bottom, and you can't have a negative pressure. Acrylic and... Yep. Plywood, MDF, yep, yep, yep. bamboo sheets, this yeah. is what laser cutting is for. ABS yeah. is okay, it's a bit smelly. 
one of them um, puts uh, off side. PVC. Yeah, PVC. PVC. Yeah. Okay. PVC. So PVC puts out a. Is it, chlor is it chlorine gas? Yes, it's chlorine gas. Chlor chlorine gas. Well, yeah. we don't want that. So. Polyvinyl chloride. Oh, chlorine, chlorine gas. Should we have a test that if you got a sec? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is known as the blowtorch test. If you've got a bit of a uh, bit of plastic and you're not sure whether it's laser safe, this is a quick and dirty test you can do to see whether it contains chlorine. If it doesn't contain chlorine, that doesn't mean it'll cut well, but it just means it won't kill you in one specific way. So it's a good first step. <laughs> ordinary, um, ordinary bit of copper here and bog standard blowtorch. I'm just heating this up to red hot just to make sure there's no plastic left on it. We'll dab that in our test piece and some of the plastic has end up stuck on the thing. Now what I'm going to do is heat it back up again and if there's chlorine present, it'll see a, you'll see a green flame come off that. There we go. So that definitely contains chlorine, so... Uh, no laser cutting. No laser cutting that. Or, yeah. bur or burning of any kind, really. It's yeah. smoke, that's right? it. That controls the laser cutters. That's it, that's it. Oh, right. um, and you can see these are my little Sudoku test pieces. I was playing around with tiles of different sizes before. I want to make a Sudoku where you, you put the tiles in place and, and tangibly play around with it. Yep. Um, but I wasn't sure how large the, the, the slot should be compared to the tile itself. So um, after playing around, I decided that about a 20 mil tile is kind of easy to grip and play with yep. and, and manipulate and have a stack of them and not take up too much space. And a 21 mil hole is, is quite right. easy to, to get in and out. Three mil of clearance is, is enough, and then after playing around with it, I'm like, actually, three mil is ridiculously large. Oh, okay. Uh, one mil of clearance is perfectly five hundred. Uh, so you sure. you design it on a special uh, app? Yeah. Or, uh, this is this is Inkscape, which is open source, and uh, it's just a it's like Adobe Illustrator or something, but it's open source. We out, output it in DXF format and then take it to the machine and import it there. And there's, a, there's a series of rain dance steps that we do and if you do all the steps in the rain dance it's then generally your file is intact and you can yeah. cut stuff. The beauty of that Inkscape though is that it actually has a plugin which allows you to do boxes on a fly very quickly. Like square boxes of, mm. with partitions, whatever. Oh, so the yeah. box maker actually allows you to... Generates the... Yeah, so you say I want a box that's this wide, this high, this deep, this high. And It'll make it, right? And you it, have to draw it manually. And you can say, my material is this thickness, and it says, would you want that to be your inside or outside dimensions? And yeah, it, it makes it ridiculously easy. So that is so cool. All you do to make the box is to just customize it and add the bits that you want. So in this case, I added a nice little oval cutout, and uh, so I've got the. Well, that's a cool box. Funny, funny you should say yeah. that, but all yeah. of carpentry is all about knowing yeah. how to make a box. Yes. That's all it is. Totally. <laughs> and that's Gab's current obsession. Yes. Yep. Yeah, this is my current obsession. <laughs> oh, this is this is where I got nice. up to recently, so I'm happy with nice. that. Nice, look at that. Uh, that's what's that? That's tails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's nice what I. Dovetails. That's how I got up to it. I go the go nice. how tight that is. Yeah. What's the name of this joint here? Uh, that's a uh, box joint because the laser cuts yeah, vertically downwards, always in a straight line. You can't really do dovetails in yeah. the same way as. Have you seen biscuits? Biscuit joint. Uh, my first encounter with biscuits yeah. was with Gavin in high school, where we. <laughs> We, someone oh else, no! Someone, is this, yeah. someone else had joined. Is this another story? Two bits of wood yeah. with a biscuit, and we both determined that we would snap the biscuit. It. Yeah, yeah. And so we put both of our weight on it, and it snapped <laughs> outside of the biscuit. <laughs> and the deputy principal came in and found us, and he <laughs> told everyone that two bright sparks. I still remember the phrase he used. <laughs> two bright sparks had decided to break this, and they couldn't break the biscuit. <laughs> they broke it just on the outside to show you how strong it was. And we were like embarrassed to I'd, see. I <laughs> demonstrated something. I filtered that out, but actually. That, I, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Remember Jono? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're playing. Yeah. This is our X carve. So this is a CNC machine. So if you program in on a laptop what you want it to do, it'll go and cut it for you. Also, the secret to to having any tool in a communal environment is that you need to have all the accessories and all the tools there and self-enforcing so that people know that they mm. go back in that spot. Yeah. Mm. If it's if it's not obvious, it'll end up everywhere and yeah. you'll never have the machine working again. The spot has to be obvious. Oops. The old, uh, the old something, dust. something resting on the keyboard. The, keyboard. the old dust, dust <laughs> on the keyboard, press F3 to remove dust. No, that's it. <laughs> Do you have any examples of CNC <coughs> material? So that's a circuit board. Ah, good old circuit board. So of course the metal here means you can't laser cut it, so you'd use CNC. Yeah. So what this is doing is, is having a V-cutter that comes down and just gouges out a groove. Technically you're carving the 
Veroni diagram of the uh, the circuit. Mm. So the opposite. The opposite, the like Veroni yeah, diagram. yeah. Okay. Um, so normally you'd use you'd use three tools. You use a V cutter to cut the actual traces out. Yep. You use a drill hole to put all the, the holes for your ICs and yep. drill hole stuff. And then you use a router bit to cut the edge free and make a, a small circuit board. It's pretty convenient. You can do it in an hour or so or less. There's a sweet spot of like, do I just solder it up on proto board? Then if it's a little bit more complex, maybe I'll make a custom circuit board on the CNC. And if it's a little bit more complex, I'm going to send it away to China and have it fabbed for ten dollars. But it's going to take me three weeks. Or yeah, and I might have to do a million of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's um, there's there's sweet spots where this machine becomes really useful. Yeah, uh, you can draw it in Eagle or, or, or standard CAD stuff. Okay. Um, there's a there's a, a script for Eagle called PCBG code, and that will take your file and then generate the, the motions of the, the cutter to do that. Yeah. You can tell it how how wide isolations you want and how deep and the rest of it. Zero dollars <laughs> from every <laughs> sub <laughs> special children. So That's have you yeah. internet connected it? We, one of our members is working on that, actually. Uh, that's, good. Yeah, Excellent. That's, I was, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. That's a big topic of discussion. <laughs> yes. yeah.